cutest thing about War of the Suns. The manual ordering form. So all the things that are in stock, we can uh, have a look at and we can put our orders in, assuming that on the internet they haven't already gone out of stock and you have a little form you can fill out and put your name in and the email address as well. I know there are people who don't use the web. I understand that. But that's okay. You can be off the web. That's scary, but it's okay for not on it. But let's have a look at this thing. Now, I, I got a... a uh, Amazing packing. That's all I'm gonna say. This thing came in a big box that was over, you know, around the edges uh, substantially, with those big uh, inflatable baggies all around it, uh, in wonderful, wonderful condition. And the second thing I need to say is that I do not know very much about this game. I have read the first 20 odd uh, pages of rules, and I'm, I'm deeply excited about this game. And I'm now trying to uh, tamp and uh, tamp down my excitement about it because I do not want to get. Uh, uh, a case of uh, uh, overinflated expectations, and maybe too late for that, but we'll see. Uh, so let's let's uh, open the box, and we're gonna have a look at the whole shooting match. So if you just want to see, I'm gonna flip through everything real quick, and then uh, feel free to tune out because I'm gonna try and do uh, uh, as much detail as I can until someone starts yelling at me to come upstairs. So uh, some dice, gotta get dice. So four different colored die in there, and your usual. Here's what your box should include. Uh, the hefty rule book, which I have already printed off, uh, it weighs in at uh, 36 pages, but there are a few uh, some pieces at the back that are variants, but yes, there are 36 pages of rules. And uh, I must say, it, it is, uh, when I try to, we'll talk about how I learn stuff some other time, but reading this, you, you're thinking about things the whole time. There are some concepts that are just generically familiar. This chip pull. There's zones of control. The zones of control are different. There's movement and there's combat. Uh, but there are a lot of other items in this which I will uh, just make brief comment on. Uh, there are different types of zones of control. Control. Uh, this can be a, two, a solo, obviously, but this can be a two, three, or four player game as well. Uh, there are some very specific events that are culturally relevant and also uh, significant from what happened historically, i.e. Um, breaking the dams or flooding rivers and things like that. Uh, the Yellow River dike destruction, uh, drought and locusts. There's economic factors, there are political factors, there are guerrilla, there's guerrilla war uh, concepts that are built into this, which I'm very interested in seeing how the asymmetrical aspects of that work. Uh, factories, I haven't read about them yet, but we've got to see how that all works. We've got to see how KMT and the Kuomintang and the, uh, the communists kind of sort of fight together, but kind of don't. And then there's uh, obviously you know how they interact with the uh, uh, Japanese Japanese collaborators. So what happens with the IJN? How are they going to handle things, right? Or the IJA, I guess. Uh, there's Chindits, There's British commandos. There's uh, Japanese naval ground forces. There are puppet forces. There are bandits. Uh, there are an enormous number of different little bits and pieces in this game. That while that all sounds, uh, there are peace talks, obviously enough and relations with major powers. That only takes up two pages of rules. Uh, there's inflation in here as well, and that is just a page of, uh, of detail, which I'm not going to get into. The rules have lots of examples in them, and I'm trying to hold this up so you can see it in this one here. Um, lots of uh, examples. It is not a full color rule book. That's okay. I have a full color printout from my PDF version. So uh, that would have been nice for the money to have a full color print uh, print out of this, but that's okay. Now here's the playbook. I've not seen the playbook. It's 56 freaking pages. That's amazing. All right. Uh, so uh, we'll have we'll come back to that and have a look at that in a second. There are, uh, as you know, uh, over a thousand counters, and I'm already going to tell you just by the feel of them. I can tell you that they feel like they're very well made. Let's see if you can see these. I probably should see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. I'm just using a webcam here to do this. Uh, there you go. There's the other camera. Ah, ah. Right. There we go. So, and the light will shine terribly on those. But here's your. Uh, what do we got here? Actually, what are we looking at? These are leader counters and uh, information markers. 
the kind of thickness feels uh, pretty good. <coughs> get a close up for you there, and I'll post pictures on all this so you can see everything properly. But let me uh, let me pop a camera around and tell you how I feel. One of the things that's have been happening lately with MMP is that uh, some of the the printing of cameras has been disappointing, and I think we're gonna happy with this. Yeah. These feel pretty good. White, not too thin. They might be a little thin, but not too thin. Uh, all well and good. So there's that. There's a map. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, two. There's a, anyway, there's a whole bunch of cows. We all know there's thousands of them. Let's have a look at the information sheets because I was interested in those. I haven't seen these yet. Uh, player raids and put your task forces in and uh, keeping track of your activations. The activation cycle is very interesting. Um, one that we probably should uh, have a conversation about in video at some point, but uh, we'll, they're all the same. Okay, so there's the four factions. A blank piece of paper, I hope that is intentionally blank. <laughs> uh, the activation se uh, sequencing is really interesting, and uh, I think it's gonna add a, a lot of uh, a nuance to the play. It's not just pull a chip and play. There's a certain number of activations you're allowed to have depending on who you are. And the sequencing of those activations is uh, determined by die roll and there are DRMs for the activations. Okay, the rest of the counters. Yeah, these guys all look real pretty too. And the color coding on the counters is pretty interesting as well. The various uh, uh, you can't see this because it's at a distance, but the, the different colors on the counters are representative of different capabilities and different uh, uh, factors to take in mind when you're uh, conducting movement or combat. I like, I like that. There's a really good use of color in the game. Let's see what else we've got in here. So we've got maps. And maps are oh, more counters. Wow. I thought we were all the light. There we go. So again, more. Political display. Let me turn my air conditioner back on. Uh, just one second. It's getting hot down here. I my office downstairs has a uh, it's exposed to a lot of heat. Um, political display, which I don't know everything about yet. A very detailed ex uh, expanded sequence of play. That's great because I was not looking forward to pages. I was not looking forward to uh, writing up my own. Full color, very nicely done uh, terrain chart. Lean mean combat results tables with uh, uh, results explained, strategic bombing and bombardment, uh, air sea attack tables, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Another blank piece of paper. So there's those more counters, more information counters, and more aircraft of various types. This is the US aircraft B29s, B25s, B47s, disease, which is a function of uh, something flooding, I think, and yet more counters. You can build railroads and uh, repair railroads and block and damage railroads and all that sort of fun stuff. I will be playing this just as uh, soon as I can. I need to finish. Case white. Let's have a look at the maps. This is one of the things that will probably challenge my space I have here. Oh yeah, this is a little uh, carve-out map uh, as well. We need to keep track of that guy. I'm gonna have to sneeze in a second, I think. will test your geometry. I mean geography. It's okay. It's a joke. Canton friends that would go up there somewhere. This goes down here somewhere. And then we have where's the third map? Man, this is pretty nice graphics. Clear fonts to read with a nice Asian feel to them without being obscure. Uh, this this little 
bluish colored area here is uh, represents the different regions. And I guess this is the, uh, the Yellow Sea, and that probably goes up further north. Yep. I think. Yep, it does. It overlays actually quite a, quite a distance. I'll show you. Be a whole lot having that there. Yeah, this uh, so the lays a good one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hexes, and I imagine that's for uh, discrete, uh, some, you know, different scenarios, things like that. Okay, so that's your map. And there's another. There's obviously another guy under here. So it's a long map, not a wide map. Game turn track over on this side, very colourful, different seasons are represented by colour. Typhoon season, opium income, snow, and spring. Alright, this is gorgeous. It's relatively, th it's regular paper. It's, uh, I would probably call it medium gloss, not too bad. It won't have too much sheen under the, under the stuff, under the prospects, whatever you call it. Okay, the playbook is uh, pretty ample. There are four mini scenarios, some operational scenarios, three of those, two different campaign games, uh, Master Orders of Battle, which are seven, nine pages long. Then there's the Chinese Communist Order of Battle, and the Siam Order of Battle just goes on and on. So Order of Battle goes for uh, 22 of the 56 pages. Bibliography, then we have events charts. Don't tell me I'm going to be referring to events charts in here the whole time. 37, let's see. The situation is here. Oh, okay, it's not going to. Let's see. We can just scan these. We can't do it. No, we can't scan. We can't. Uh, I have to scan them and print them off. But it's got uh, general events chart. Per turn, it's only two pages, and then there's conditional events. I'm not sure how often that's going to occur. Various situations here. Unit examples, front and back. Nice. That's nice to see. Breakdown charts, garrison requirements, transport capacity tables. And I'm not sure if they're represented anywhere else, but that's interesting enough. We'll print all those off. I'll scan all those and print them. I'm not sure what that is. And factory, uh, factory, faction and click cards. All right, that's a quick look at the game. We'll be getting on this bad boy super soon. Uh, the other interesting thing, last thing, uh, the hexes are actually quite large on this bad boy as well. And it's the five, eight, five eighths inch canvas, I believe. I said five eighths. Doesn't tell us. What are the sons? fits into the World War II chronolo chronology that we're uh, tackling, the whole uh, world, all of World War II in chronological order. We've started out of order, but that's okay. The idea is we're going to play them all and try and do them in order when we can, and then go from there. Uh, this guy obviously do, you know, starts in 39, so it would be right around the time of Case White. So we'll hit this right after we do Case White, since it's already set up. We've done the Blitzkrieg Legend, the Case Yellow. We've done, or in the middle of doing, uh, the campaign for North Africa, which is probably going to end early, and uh, we'll get this on. This will probably take be a lengthy game. Uh, I imagine between this and Case White, this probably going to run me out to the end of the summer at least. So we'll see what happens. Uh, excited about it. Looks beautiful. Uh, beautiful uh, uh, overall. Uh, very impressed with the uh, the quality of the components. I really like the rules that I've read so far. They feel like they're going to gel well together. We'll see how they actually play together. I intend to play this as a three-player game, not a two-player game. And, uh, and we'll see if I can trifurcate my brain. It'll be fun. All right.